All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Good barely afternoon. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Emily. I'm the chef and coordinator here of our teaching kitchen at New York Presbyterian Hudson Valley Hospital. To those of you who I haven't seen yet this new year. Happy New Year. I'm so glad that you've joined us today. And to those of you who have been in my classes already this week, welcome back. So I'm um, thrilled, of course, to uh, be holding a plant-based uh, class today. It's one of my favorite topics of all time. I feel like I say that about a lot of topics, but um, Certainly, plant-based is really important to me uh, on many levels. So today, we're going to be teaching a plant-based meals for the new year class to help inspire you and get you cooking more plants. Um, so that's part of our plan today. Um, just a few Zoom ground rules before. Before we get started, to remind you, we have uh, Frances McCarthy joining us as our moderator today. Thank you, Fran. She's going to be um, reading the questions that come into our chat box. So if you've got a question throughout the program, put it into the chat and Fran um, will read it to me. All right. Um, a couple other Zoom ground rules, maybe towards the end of class, if we have time, we can open it up for more um, informal Q&A and you can unmute yourself if you want at that point. But please stay muted throughout the presentation to avoid any background noise and feedback and all that stuff. Um, all right. Oh, speaking of background noise and feedback, I think someone has unmuted themselves. <laughs> so thank you for reminding us all to stay muted. Um, so we're gonna be talking about plant-based meals today. It is one week into the new year. And I don't think I can start this class with a, without acknowledging what a, what a week it has been. Um, certainly politics aside, uh, something that everybody can agree on, um, whether you're one side of the aisle or the other, is that we need to eat more plants for our health and for the health of our planet. So it's not too late also to make your New Year's resolution or what I like to think of as your New Year's intention, what you're hoping um, to enjoy more of in 2021. And I hope that that's plants for all of you. So it's not too late, you can start today. And uh, with that, let's talk about the recipes we're gonna be making. So we're gonna be making a buffalo cauliflower wings. So instead of your traditional chicken wings that you might have had around the Super Bowl last year, um, this we're gonna be making with cauliflower. So I'm excited to show you how to make these. And another dish that I really love is a stuffed acorn squash. So if you're not familiar with acorn squash, this is the green squash. This is what it looks like. I've roasted it ahead of time and I'll walk you through exactly how I did that. So never fear. And um, so those are going to be our two dishes today. They're going to be very tasty, very filling, um, and of course feature lots of plants. So I'm going to jump right into the cauliflower recipe. And then if we have time at the end of class, um, I'll get a little bit more into why a plant-based diet is so important. Um, but just generally, what it is, is it's a diet that's lower in fat, higher in fiber, because it includes lots and lots of plants. Um, and it's a diet that focuses on health, primarily consisting of plants, but may also occasionally include a little bit of meat, perhaps some seafood, eggs, dairy. So it's very, it's, um, it's nice because it's a very flexible approach to, um, to your diet. So one of the health reasons we're focused on it today is it can potentially lower your risk of developing heart disease, similar to the Mediterranean diet. There's a lot of overlaps between the two. All right, so with that, let's get started. Everybody should have received their packet um, with the recipes in it in your inbox. If you did not, don't worry, I'll send it to you at the end of the class as well as with a feedback survey. So don't worry about that. All right, we're gonna start by making our batter, right? This is gonna be a mix of almond meal or almond flour. Almond flour doesn't actually contain any flour in it, right? It's just the way um, in which the almonds are processed that make them super, super fine. So we're gonna be using some almond flour mixed with onion powder, garlic powder, some smoked paprika to give this a really good smoky flavor. Um, and I didn't write this in the recipe because I wasn't sure if, um, if people wanted to add salt or not. Often people who are plant-based focused 
um, are also trying to lower the amount of salt that they, they have. So you can add salt if you want to the, um, to the powder mixture. So those are those ingredients. Let's put them into, I'm gonna be using this little food processor today or spice grinder. And I'm gonna add some water to this to make our batter. And I'm gonna pop this into my little mixer here. You can use a regular blender if you'd like. That's usually what I use. This is actually um, kind of an experiment for me. So let's see how it works. All right, well, that worked out really well. So we've got our mixture. Actually, what that looks like. And this amount is, you might have to make, um, you know, double it depending on the size of your cauliflower. I think this might be enough for our cauliflower, but let's see. Um, we've also got some whole wheat panko breadcrumbs, right? These are whole wheat. You can make your own breadcrumbs, of course, with stale bread. Um, so we're going to fold those in right before we toss it in the cauliflower so it remains crunchy. All right, so let's get to the star of our show, our cauliflower. I know there's a bit of a glare today. We're lucky we've got some sunshine, um, but hopefully you can see this is cauliflower. Um, cauliflower is really high in fiber. It's low in calorie, which is why it's such a popular vegetable. It's 92% water, which is hard to imagine. Um, and it also is very choline rich, which is good for um, brain development and the nervous system health. Um, one of the wonderful things about cauliflower is it contains sulforaphane, I can hardly ever say that, but sulforaphane may actually be protective against um, some cancers. So it falls into that category of cruciferous vegetables, which include broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, bok choy, kale, um, Brussels sprouts, all of those that have a slightly sulfur, sulfur taste. Um, that's why, because it has that wonderful compound. So I'm going in at an angle. We're going to get rid of these tough leaves and compost them. I certainly have, um, I have cooked these leaves before. It just takes a really, really long time. So you want to just chop them up really small and then stew them for a long time with liquid. Um, it's, it's a bit fibrous. Like, like I said, there's a lot of fiber in the leaves. We're going to focus on these florets. So let's get this off the core, just kind of going around. And we're going to toss them in the batter and the breadcrumbs, and then they go onto a hot sheet pan. So this is important. Um, my sheet pan is in the oven with nothing on it, no parchment paper, no tin foil. I, I suppose you could put tin foil if you wanted to. Um, I usually use parchment paper in my in my cooking. However, because the sheet pan is in there with nothing on it, I'm not going to put um, put parchment on it because it could burn. So it's just in there bare, and that's going to help us to create a sear with this cauliflower. So as you can see, I'm just cutting everything kind of bite size. And this is nice. It's a dish that makes for a really tasty side and um, or like a snack if you want if you're watching a sports game, although I don't know how many of us are doing that these days. All right, so just cutting this into bite size pieces. We'll pop it into this little bowl I have here, toss it in the batter with the breadcrumbs, and then it goes right on the sheet pan. So it's really a very easy dish. Um, to put together, right? So everything is about, about that size, okay? Fran, do we have any questions so far? I know Fran is, Hi. Um, there she is. Well, we are good. Actually, Carmela just uh, wanted to know if we would wash or soak the cauliflower. Thank you for asking that, um, Carmela. So I just give it a rinse before um, before cooking with it. I don't ever, I don't really soak it. I just give it a nice rinse and put it in my refrigerator when I get home. So that's sort of my approach to it. But if you feel more comfortable soaking it, certainly you could. Um, I will leave that up to you. But there's no there's no reason that you should have to. Um, cauliflower is actually on the um, on the clean 15 list. So I often will refer to this list. It's, um, 
the Environmental Working Group, EWG, and they come up with a list every year that's Dirty Dozen and Clean 15. So I don't know if they've come up with 2021 yet, but basically they sample and see um, if, you know, if the, the fruits and vegetables are heavily sprayed, then they go on the Dirty Dozen list. If they're not heavily sprayed, they go on the Clean 15 list. So cauliflower is on that Clean 15 list meaning that it is not a heavily sprayed food that you can um, actually buy conventionally if you're, even if you're worried about pesticides, it doesn't contain a lot of pesticides. All right, let's add our breadcrumbs, toss that up. Okay, I need a bigger bowl. <laughs> I need a bigger bowl, but this is fine. We're gonna make do. Okay, and we're gonna put this right onto our sheet pan and get this roasting right away. All right, so one, here, let me bring this close for you all to see. All right, so one trick here is the sheet pan is gonna be really hot, which is gonna to help to form a sear with the cauliflower right away. And we're gonna add a little bit of oil to that sheet pan as soon as I take it out. So it goes sheet pan, oil, cauliflower. You can hear a sizzle there, right? And you just wanna spread it out one layer, all right, try not to move it around too much once it hits the pan and back right back in the oven. All right. Okay, so do we have any questions about that, Fran? I know that was a pretty quick process. It was actually really quick. People were uh, inquiring what you were tossing the cauliflower in, which I did yeah. see that she is combining and tossing the cauliflower in the batter in step two. So if somebody did Perfect. ask, you can just um, yeah, say that again. So, sure. So if you tuned in a bit late, um, basically what we did is we made a, made a plant-based batter using almond flour, onion powder, garlic, a little, I added a little pinch of salt and smoked paprika. We blended that with water and then we tossed the cauliflower in that mixture. Um, Let's see, then what do we do? Yeah, I guess it just went onto the sheet pan with a little bit of oil on that um, on the pan. You know, I kept the sheet pan in the oven so that as soon as I took it out, it was it was really hot and I heard a sizzle. That's what you want. So, um, so yeah, and then the final step, oh, I can't forget that. Um, so after tossing it in the batter, I added some whole wheat breadcrumbs, which is gonna give it a nice kind of crunchy texture, which is what we're looking for with this dish. All right. So finally, when those come out, they're gonna cool for about three to four minutes. And let's get our pan hot here for our next step. Um, they're gonna cool for about three to four minutes. And then we're gonna toss them in a mix of barbecue sauce. And I have um, the Cholula hot sauce. You can also use Frank's hot sauce if you like. It's very typical for wings. And so I have a little mixture of that. And then we're gonna also um, top it with some scallions. So that's it for the cauliflower dish. How easy is that? And it's very, very flavorful. All right, Fran, I hope that clears, clears things up for everybody. Okay. So let's begin our next dish, which is the, um, the stuffed acorn squash. So one of my favorite squashes, so delicious. Um, so how did I prepare this? This is our acorn squash. Um, this is what it looked like before I cut it in half. Maybe you recognize this from your grocery store, right? or your farmer's market. So I cut it in half, put it face down on a baking sheet with a little bit of oil and roasted it until it was nice and brown and soft. So how do you know it's soft enough? You can take a knife and it pierces right through. You're no resistance, you're all set. Um, you can scoop the seeds out before you roast it or you can wait until after you roast it if you want to make it a little easier on yourself. Either way is fine. So you can make this little scooped out squash and take the seeds out after you roast it. Um, one thing, it's very, very hard to cut through acorn squash because it's a very hard squash. So if you would like to, you can take the whole squash, put it in your microwave for about two to three minutes, and then it cut. you can cut through it much more easily. So I'm just gonna um, mention for my friends out there who may have trouble cutting a squash, or even, even if you're like me and you just, feeling a little lazy or tired, throw your squash in the oven, or I'm sorry, in the microwave for three minutes. And then, um, and then, you know, it'll be a lot easier to cut. All right. So with that, I'm going to reuse this sheet pan because it's already dirty. 
So I've got my squash ready here. I'm gonna put that on the sheet pan and set it to the side. And let's prepare our filling. So I'm getting a nice big pan here. Hope you can all see the cutting board. There we go. And we're just gonna start by sauteing the onions. So most of you have probably seen me do this. If you've joined me before, cut off a little bit of the top, a little bit of the bottom. And you just want everything to be pretty small, you know, kind of like um, little, little chunks. This is the size of our mushroom. So we want, want the onion to be about the same size. All right, so top and bottom, right through the middle, peel the exterior. And one of the reasons I love this dish is you can be really flexible with it. If you've got some spinach that you wanna throw in, um, if you have a pepper that's hanging out in your fridge, some leftover broccoli, it's kind of like, you know, it's a good like clean out the fridge leftovers dish because everything just gets thrown into the squash and baked for 10 minutes. So it's very, very easy um, to use stuff up. All right, so got that peel off. I'm just gonna do a quick dice without touching my spoon on fire. All right, quick dice. So cutting through, but not all the way through the base. Protecting my fingers, of course, as I go curling and cut straight across to get a nice dice. And again, this is going to be stuffed into the squash. No one's going to be measuring the size of my onion dice. In culinary school, they do that, you know. They, the instructors come around with a ruler and they measure your um, the size of your dices to make sure that they're all the right size. So not here today. So very easy and relaxed onion chop. All right, so let's get this going in our pan. I'm using a rondeau today. Rondeau just has um, the higher sides around it. You can use a saute pan if that's what you have, that's what you prefer. I like this one because it's really, really big. So it gives, um, it allows for a lot of space for browning. So if you have things that are in your pan and your pan is too crowded, Many of you know this, it's just gonna steam, it's not gonna brown, and we all know now that browning is flavor. So let's build that flavor in. All right, so my pan is warmed. Just gonna add enough extra virgin olive oil to saute. If you are a plant-based person that's trying to minimize or avoid your use of oils, there are some plant-based folks out there that, um, that are trying to decrease the amount of fat that they use. Certainly, you can do this with vegetable stock or broth instead. So you can try um, sauteing your onion in a little veggie stock. It's just as effective. You're not going to have the flavor of the fat, of course, but it is going to be lower in calories. So if that's something you're concerned about, give it a try. All right, I'm going to bring the heat up just a little bit and start with that saute. Fran, I'm going to check in with you on questions. How is everybody doing? Thank you so much. So Chef Emily, are we able to use regular flour or whole wheat flour rather than the almond meal? This is from Randy. Yeah, so Randy, thanks for watching. Um, certainly you can use whole wheat flour. Whole wheat flour is going to have a bit of a taste. Um, the almond flour is unique because it has a nuttiness to it because comes from a nut. So uh, the other reason I like to use the almond flour is that it's high in fiber, high in protein, um, and it also contains the monounsaturated fat, as well as some vitamin E, magnesium, antioxidants, which help to protect you against ox oxidative stress. So almonds have a lot of really good things in there for you. They can also help to assist your body in controlling and modulating your blood sugar. So that's another reason why you're focusing on the almonds today. That said, you can certainly use um, whole wheat flour or any kind of flour that you like. We're only using a quarter cup and it's just to make the batter. So um, yeah, feel free to make that substitution. If you wanted to use a gluten-free flour, you could do that as well. Um, so I, I leave it up to you. I think the only flour I would not use is coconut flour because um, that has a really distinct coconut taste. And it's a very, very dry, dry flour. So um, coconut flour is a little bit hard to work with because it just sucks the moisture out of everything you do. So that's the only one that I would kind of put a question mark near. But yeah, good question, Randy. Thank you. 
Thank you, Chef Emily. I do have another question from Judy. Uh, she has Great. some sensitivity to spicy ingredients and she was inquiring about the sauces that um, would be possible for her to use. I did suggest to her that it's much like restaurants. You can, you know, try different uh, sauces um, for the for the wings. Um, yeah. But would you happen to have a recipe or maybe a brand name for a not too spicy sauce? Yeah, so um, so Judy, I am like you, I'm pretty sensitive to spice. What I would do is just omit the hot sauce. So in the recipe, you'll see it calls for a barbecue sauce and a hot sauce mixed together. Just leave the hot sauce out and stick with the barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauces are generally sweeter rather than, um, rather than being spicy. So feel free to just leave it out. Um, that's what I would suggest. Let's add some mushrooms in with our onion. All right. Um, I chopped up way more than I needed, but I just wanna show you how I did it. So we're using our little cremini mushrooms today, my little friends, I love these. I'm gonna pop off the stem, pull that out. A lot of people will use this. If you want to feel free, it's just more fiber. And then making a tunnel, one, two, three, four, right? Slices, turn, and now one, two, three, four, five across to get a little mushroom dice, right? So feel free to use um, cremini mushrooms, portobello mushrooms, shiitake mushrooms. All of these are going to add umami flavoring into your dish. Many of you know I use this word a lot. So umami is one of our tastes. They're sweet, sour, bitter, salty, and umami. I think I'm, did I miss any? I think that's all of them. All right, so umami is really important because it's that deep, rich, savory flavor. Our taste buds actually have special receptors for this kind of a flavor. Um, and in plant foods, it's a little bit harder to find. Um, it's the kind of taste that you get from eating a steak or some seared meat, right? But you can find it in mushrooms and Tomato paste is another great source, as well as soy sauce. So you can use soy sauce or coconut aminos, whichever you prefer. Um, but either way, you want to try to incorporate some umami flavor um, into your plant-based cooking because it's just going to give your dish so much more taste and, and really um, power. All right, everybody, I want to introduce you to tempeh. This is what it looks like like in the package. I usually take this out of the package, but I just thought, you know, I would show everybody today how I do that. So with the plastic still on, there's this little um, part here that you can peel open. If you want to, you can do that. Um, but what I often do is I just take my scissors and I cut straight across the top. So that cuts through both layers of plastic. And then I squeeze out the bottom and then it comes right up. All right. So tempeh, if you're not familiar with it, it is fermented soy. So it's really, really um, very good for you if you are um, okay having soy, of course. And just want to check on our cauliflower quickly. Oh, it smells so good. Wow, this is looking delicious. All right, it needs a little bit longer. Let's let it keep going a bit. Um, so a brief note on tempeh, it's a fermented soy product, it's high in protein, plant-based protein. Um, following fermentation, the soybeans are pressed into a compact cake, and sometimes wheat can be added. So if you are gluten-free, please check the label and make sure that you're getting one that is a gluten-free um, variety. Often, so if you're not familiar with it, again, this is what it looks like, got all those little nuts and seeds in it. Um, it's firm, it's nutty, it's chewy, it can be steamed, sauteed, baked. Often it's marinated to add more flavor. Um, and again, like I mentioned, it's loaded with protein. Um, it's low in fat, low in carbohydrates. And because it is fermented, it has some prebiotic qualities and material as well. So really, really good thing to enjoy if you can have soy. Of course, um, many, many people can't enjoy soy and that's absolutely fine. You can leave it out of this recipe. You don't need to need to put it in. So I'm gonna break this in half and grate it on the largest holes in my box grater, just like a Parmesan cheese or a ground meat. Now it's kind of resembling that texture. 
And you can add as much or as little of this as you want. So you can do the whole brick. If you're making a lot of this, or you can, you know, just do half. It's really a flexible recipe. You can just add as much as you like. So I like grating it because it kind of breaks it up and you get this nice texture to work with. And we're gonna throw this in with our mushrooms and onions to give it lots of flavor. So tempeh on its own, you can, you know, technically speaking, you can eat it right straight from the package. However, it's not gonna have a lot of flavor. It's similar to tofu in that sense that it's gonna take on the flavor that you connect it to. So scrape this up and check in with Fran. Hi, we do have a few questions regarding Tempeh. Um, one is um, actually, what would you use instead of? And then I have a question from Anna who, um, let's go back to this question, my apologies. Yep. Um, hmm. Where'd it go? I know you have a lot of oh, questions okay. coming in, is so thank you. Is tempeh or soy okay for growing boys? And is that an impact on the hormones? A valid concern? Yeah, so um, soy is a very controversial topic. I always suggest that people speak to their primary care physician about, um, about soy and if it's appropriate for you. Um, a lot of cultures eat tons of soy and there's no issues whatsoever. So check with your physician. If you have um, if you have a breast cancer uh, positive, can't remember the exact term for it. But there is if you are if you are um, at risk for breast cancer or have a specific um, gene that makes you at risk for that, certainly check with your physician. In terms of young boys uh, and and young girls, there's no reason not to include soy in their diet unless your physician specifically says not to. All right, so I know that's kind of a vague answer, but I have to refer you to your medical care practitioners on that one. Thank you, Chef Emily. And regarding the substitution, what yep. would you suggest um, using? Yep, great. So um, I just wanna show you all our cauliflower because it's looking really good. All right, you can see it's like soft, it's softening. It's crispy. I think we could use a little more time, just be still a little hard, but let's let that sit in there. So instead of tempeh, like I mentioned, you can leave it out. You do not have to have um, tempeh in this dish. I'm just going to chop some garlic to keep things moving along here. Um, so you do not have to add tempeh to this dish. Certainly, if you want to add a sort, we're going to add some quinoa, so it's already going to have some protein in it. Um, but if you were, you know, if you were plant based, you could even buy like one of those um, plant-based sausages or plant-based meats or um, something like that if you like those and throw that in. You know, you can add that in, it has lots of flavor. I'm just trying to add more protein to the dish basically to make it more complete. All right, so that's the goal. Thank you. And quick question regarding the, um, the tempeh, is it okay to freeze it? And how long of a shelf life does it have? Yeah, so great question. Tempeh, because it's a fermented food, it does keep for quite a long time. I always keep a brick or two in my fridge because it's a great source of protein, like I mentioned. And sometimes, you know, I run out of other sources of protein and it's just a good one to have in the fridge. Um, so I think it, it should actually say it right on the package, usually how long you can keep it for. You are supposed to keep it refrigerated. That's important. Um, you can freeze it. Like most frozen, you know, frozen foods, um, three to six months generally before it starts to acquire a bit of a taste uh, from the freezer. So that's my rule of thumb. Okay. All right. I'm gonna move things along here, Fran, just for a second. I'm gonna add our spices. So ground cumin, smoked paprika, a little pinch of salt, some thyme. Let's pop that in. As well as our tomato paste and get this coated and all mixed in, and our um, soy sauce, or tamari, or coconut aminos, any of those things, just to add a little salt to this dish. So I'm just gonna stir this around to kind of break up the tomato paste, and then we're gonna add some vegetable stock. So I've got about a cup here, veggie broth, any kind of low sodium, 
veggie broth works well. And uh, our final thing we're gonna add here is our cooked quinoa. So I cooked it ahead of time, again, just to help speed things along. All right, actually I forgot, I'm gonna need the oven on for our squash, which is going back in. So Emily, would you turn over that cauliflower at any point in time? No, no reason to, you can just let it go. Let and it cook. We, okay, and would we, be, yeah. would we be able to use any other vegetables with this, um, this batter that you had made? Oh, I like that question. Um, I have not tried this with other vegetables because I really wanted to kind of create like a, a fake chicken wings, <laughs> you know, yeah. dish. Um, but I bet you could. I bet it would, would be good with something like even mushrooms or um, maybe zucchini or I mean, even broccoli. It's going to change the taste, but I'm sure you could play around with different things. Very good idea. Let's throw some quinoa in here. Speaking of, I cooked our quinoa ahead of time just to speed things along, um, but I did just cook it according to the package directions. So right on the back there, I think it says one cup of quinoa for two cups of water, and then uh, just put it in the pot, brought it to a boil, turned it down, let it simmer, and that was that. 10 to 15 minutes. You can add a pinch of salt, as always, with all of your greens. Feel free if you'd like to cook them in um, either vegetable stock or a flavorful liquid that you like. That way it's gonna give your grains even more flavor. All right, we're almost ready here. Let's stuff our squash and pop this in. We're having some really great questions today. Thank you everybody for your participation. All right, I'm gonna fill this up with our filling, try not to melt my cutting board here we go and so this is done so of course you could eat this just like this but we're gonna make it fancy today i'm gonna fill this up get a nice serving spoon fill each little cavity this would have been a really good thanksgiving dish right everyone could have their own like personal little acorn squash of course in my book it's never too late for thanksgiving food <laughs> All of it is so delicious. So you just want to kind of fill those up, mound it up. And of course, if you wanted to, you could throw some, um, some cheese on top. Now we are focusing on plant-based today, so we're not going to do that. With your extra filling, feel free to just enjoy it as is. All right, so well, let's put this into the oven. And it goes just for about five, 10 minutes or so. So everything has a chance to hang out. All right, I'm gonna bring our attention back to our cauliflower over here. So this is cooked. Um, if I put my knife through, it still has a little bit of, um, like retaining a little bit of crunch, but really not. It's still kind of um, toothsome. I think that's the word I'm looking for. So you can get, you know, a spatula or, it's going to be, you have to let it cool for, you know, three to five minutes. Otherwise, it's going to stick to your pan entirely. So let it cool for a little bit, which I didn't really do, but we let it cool for a little. All right, let's pop this into our bowl and toss it in the sauce. Yeah, friends. Yeah, hi. So a quick question regarding frozen vegetables, such as like mm, uh, yes. winter vegetables, like cauliflower. Would they mm -hmm. roast okay? Or would you have to defrost them, bring them to room temperature? Yeah, so unfortunately, uh, frozen vegetables are a great thing to have on hand. Um, we can't always get to the grocery store and or farmer's market. Um, so certainly it's a great thing to have frozen veggies on hand. That said, um, unfortunately, when you're roasting vegetables, if you're pulling them from the freezer, it's very hard because the freezer adds a lot of moisture to your vegetables. So the only way to roast something is if it's dry, super, super dry. Then you're going to get some nice browning. All right. So if you are, um, if you are pulling stuff from your freezer and roasting it, it's going to be much more challenging because the freezer adds a lot of water to it. It's not impossible, but it's more challenging. Okay, so this is done. Let's plate this up here. 
And you want to enjoy these, you know, pretty quickly soon after because they lose their crunch once they go into the barbecue sauce. So if you're a crunch person, have them right away. If you don't mind them hanging out and getting a little bit soft, then um, certainly you can enjoy them the next day or whenever. And let's add some scallions. Some nice green. I just sliced thinly, sprinkled on top. It adds a nice little oniony flavor. And now we have our barbecue cauliflower bites. Looks good, right? I'll just send it right through Zoom to all of you. I'm working on that technology. It's top secret. Yes, we are all dro drooling over here. <laughs> all right, and then a little garnish for our um, for our squash dish. I'm gonna take off the stems there and just do a little mince on our cilantro. It's good to make sure your herbs are dry when you're cutting them as dry as possible. Otherwise you end up with a lot of liquid. So just wash them, wrap them in a little paper towel, put them in your fridge. The leaves like to stay um, just a touch moist. So what I basically will do, and let's pretend this is paper towel, take my herbs, give them a good dunk in some water when I get home, wrap them up, wrap this around the leaves, and then put this in a little baggie in your refrigerator. So your herbs stay um, just slightly, slightly moist, not soaking wet, just a little damp. All right, and then when you take it out, you can chop it right up. All right, wow, that was faster than I thought today. Any other questions? Well, since you do have a few minutes and we are nearly done, and I would assume you have a couple of minutes to answer out of the ordinary kind of questions. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I'll take some out of the ordinary questions. Sure. Okay. Well, Carmelina was inquiring, what's, what's the difference in saturated fat, plant-based or from meats and cheese? Okay, so what's the difference between saturated fat, plant-based, and meat and cheese? Um, so dairy and meat, saturated fat across the board is the same, whether it's meat, cheese, or coconut oil, it's still saturated fat. And it still should be um, it still should be consumed as a saturated fat. So what do I mean by that? Moderately. Um, so currently, the American Heart Association does not recommend coconut oil as a heart healthy oil because of its high saturated fat content. I do use coconut oil here in this kitchen, small amounts every once in a while. It's not my primary source of fat, though. We're using mostly olive oils, avocado oils, things that come from plants that are lower in saturated fat and that are higher in monounsaturated and polyunsaturated. Those are the ones that are um, the best for heart health. Thank All you. Right. Sure. And what vegetables are low fiber, easily digestible? And this question is coming from Liz. Yes. Yeah. So low fiber, easily digestible vegetables. Um, that's a good question, Liz. So I would look at there's a specific um, group of fruits and vegetables that are what's called low FODMAP. Um, so Liz, I'll send you a list of those. Um, Fran, if you don't mind taking down Liz's email, I'll send you a list of those, Liz, because it's, it's comprehensive. Yeah. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Ooh, this smells good. All right, so um, just a quick note on plant-based. We talked a little bit about what it is, what it includes. Um, it is different from a vegan diet. Vegan is no animal products whatsoever, it excludes um, things like honey, dairy, meat, fish, um, leather. <laughs> vegan doesn't have any of that in it. So plant-based is different from vegan because it does They'll include a little bit of um, meat once in a while, seafood once in a while, eggs, dairy, all that once in a while, right? So, but it's not the main focus. The main focus is plants. So I just wanted to make that distinction quickly. Um, it's also different from vegetarian um, because you can eat Oreos all day, which are vegetarian, but I would call those plant-based. So plant-based is really focusing on the plant as in its whole state, all right? Um, 
there are lots of reasons to enjoy more plants in our diet, of course, from health reasons to ethical reasons to environmental reasons. So whatever your reasons are, tie them to your vision and your values. What is it about plant-based that you value? Why is it important to you? What's your vision for yourself and your best health? What's your vision for the planet and the best health for the planet? So tying your goals to your vision and your values will make them that much stronger and more powerful. So I just want to encourage you all to take a, a moment to think about that. Um, and then the last thing, of course, that I love about plant-based is the fiber. So one of the fascinating things about fiber is it is prebiotic material, basically meaning it's going to feed your intestinal flora and help your body to flourish and thrive. So um, with that, plant-based, every different plant, we often just talk about insoluble and soluble fiber. Every different plant has slightly different types of fiber. And all those slightly different types of fiber feed all the different kinds of bacteria in your gut and help support you. So that is the magic of plants. Um, Fran, I see some more questions coming through. What do we got? Actually, they are just compliments about this class, Emily. You did a wonderful oh, job, nice. very informative, and everybody seems to really enjoy this. Aww, Lots of gratitude so here. One. I'm so grateful to all of you. We have about four minutes left. I'm just gonna plate these beautiful squash up for you. I really wish I could share this with everybody. It's just half the fun of food is sharing it. So someday we're getting closer. Let's add our cilantro and look at that. How beautiful, how tasty, how complete of a meal, right? You've got the quinoa, the tempeh, both adding protein. You've got the mushrooms, the onion, and the squash, adding some carbohydrates and some vegetables. The tomato paste, adding a wonderful source of lycopene and antioxidants. So hopefully with this meal, you'll feel really nourished, you'll feel really full, and, um, and I hope you like the flavors that it has in there. Um, we talked about tempeh, we talked about cauliflower, acorn squash, one of our heroes today, high in vitamin A, high in, which is beta carotene, great for your eyesight. Magnesium also contains potassium. Magnesium is like nature's chill pill. It is so great. Magnesium and potassium. Um, and then one cup of acorn squash contains 83 calories, seven grams of fiber. So we love that stuff. Um, you can eat the skin. You may not want to, but it is edible. So if you are um, reluctant, you can try it. It's very chewy. So if you prefer to just use a spoon and scoop out the flesh, no harm done. You can certainly do that too and still get lots of good stuff in there for you. Um, so with that, in the final moments we have left, Fran, I'll take one or two more questions if anybody has. That would be wonderful if you can. So yeah. how would you actually um pick out a good squash ah oh, great question thank you for asking that i always forget to talk about choosing fruits and vegetables um certainly a hard squash is a good squash if squash is in the grocery store it's it's going to be fine as long as it's not bruised or you should just check it make sure there's no spot that you can kind of press in and the whole thing indents then it's not it might be um have some rot in there otherwise your squash is going to be good no matter what if a squash is a little like like a watermelon, right? If a squash is a little bit heavier than it looks, if you look at it and you, you know, we kind of make these snap judgments about how heavy something's gonna be when we pick it up. If it's a little bit heavier, that just means it's gonna have a little more um, liquid in it. So that's completely fine. Thank you. And actually a question about vegan uh, cheeses. So would you happen mm. to have um, a good brand or a type of cheese that is enjoyable? Ooh, yeah. I mean, we live in a great world if you're vegan right now, because there's so many options for um, vegan cheeses. Um, there's a few brands out there. They tend to be more expensive if they are just one ingredient or two ingredients, which is kind of counterintuitive, right? But if something is strictly made from cashews, I really like those. I think there's a brand called like My, My Kikos or something like that. 
And um, Rosario, uh, yeah. Rosaria, sorry, um, actually said Daya, D-A-I. I love Daya cheese, it's so good. Um, so it? Daya cheese is, is delicious. It's mostly made with um, tapioca starch. And um, it's, it's a fine cheese to enjoy. I think um, it's definitely not the most like whole foods cheese, meaning that it's going to have a list of ingredients like maltodextrin and other things in there. Um, but I, I will enjoy it from time to time. I think the orange um, like cheddar like one melts really, really well. So if you wanted like a melty, stretchy vegan cheese, maybe that's, that's a good option. Thank yeah. you. And uh, one last question regarding the squash. How do you store it? This is from Naomi. Do you refrigerate, yeah. refrigerate squash before cooking? And how long does the squash last before you have to cook it? So Naomi, thanks for that question. It's a really good one. Um, I have squash sitting right over there in that corner <laughs> in, in a cool, dark place that I picked from our garden in November. So a lot of Squash will actually, um, from the supermarket, will have like a wax coating around it to protect it from oxidi oxidizing. Um, the squash that I picked from the garden in November has been sitting on a shelf over there in the dark corner, a cool, dark place for now a few months. Um, I certainly, you, so certainly you don't have to store squash in your refrigerator. Just keep it in a cool, dark spot or even on your counter if you're going to use it in the next few weeks or so. Um, unless it's got like indents on it or it's soft somewhere, it's not really going to go bad because it's a sealed, contained, um, you know, environment. Yeah. Thank you so very much. And it is 45 right on the dot. It is. Yeah. So thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in for our plant-based meals for a new year. Never too late to start your intentions, start your resolution, eat more plants. So get inspired, eat your plants, uh, stay connected, you know, to yourself, to each other, to us, to your community and to your food stay connected and of course um keep cooking everybody thank you so much and we've got more classes coming up next week from moroccan cuisine to the art of zen cooking um and we have a third class i think it's a plant-based spanish tapas class coming up soon too so feel free to come on back and thanks everyone for your time today thank you thank you